Hi there, wonderful person. Welcome to the Astro Forum channel and thanks for tuning in. This will be a beginner level tutorial where I will show you how to set up auto guiding in PHD2. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to set up your guide scope and your camera, how to connect it to your telescope and also how to connect your camera via a USB cable to your laptop and work with a program that is called PHD2 guiding, how to set it up and start auto guiding. Uh, if you're not sure what auto guiding is, I will link to a video I've previously made in the video description below so you can check that out. But basically, if you want to take multi-minute pictures of deep sky objects, you pretty much need to master auto guiding because it will keep your equatorial mount uh, accurately focused on a deep sky target for multiple minutes. Let's dive right in. So let me first quickly show you how I connect my guide scope and my guide camera to my main imaging telescope. I'm using a very simple finder's view in my case uh, to connect my guide scope and my guide camera to my main imaging telescope, in this case the Celestron Edge HD. And um, now let's get into different ways to connect your guide camera to your laptop or computer to start auto guiding. So let me quickly show you the different ways in which you can start auto guiding. So first you can of course use the ST4 guide port on your camera. So you'll run an ST4 cable from your guide port to your equatorial mount and you run a second USB cable from your camera to your laptop. The laptop will communicate with the camera directly uh, using PHD2 guiding and then the camera will send corrections to your equatorial mount. So most astrophotographers actually prefer this second way where you are going to connect your guide camera and your equatorial mount separately to your laptop or computer you're going to be using for astrophotography. So in this example you will run a USB cable from your guide camera to your laptop but you will not be using the ST4 port on the guide cam itself and connect the guide cam to your equatorial mount but instead you're going to run a direct USB cable from your equatorial mount to your laptop and take into account that some equatorial mounts they have a USB connection right on the mount itself and some other equatorial mounts they actually have a USB connection on the bottom of their hand controller mostly a mini USB output that you can use to connect the equatorial mount to your laptop and also be aware that when you're going to be using this method you're going to need additional drivers they are called ASCOM drivers I will get into that later on in this video so I also wanted to make you aware that a lot of astrophotographers, they end up buying USB hubs. So in this example, you can see that the equatorial mount and the guide cam, they are first connected to a USB hub. And then a second cable, dedicated USB cable is run from that hub to a laptop or your computer for astrophotography. Uh, take into account that besides your equatorial mount and your guide camera, of course, you also have your main uh, imaging camera that needs to be connected via USB. And a lot of people, they buy additional gears such as filter wheels, uh, rotators and so on. Uh, so at one point you might come to the conclusion that it is easier to use a USB hub to first connect all of these cables to that hub and then run one dedicated cable from that hub to your main laptop or computer you're going to be using for astrophotography. So let me finally also share my personal setup. So instead of using a USB hub, I have a mini PC. So I connect all of my astrophotography gear to that mini PC. And that uh, mini uh, computer is able to pick up my home Wi-Fi network. Uh, so I can actually connect a laptop to that mini PC uh, via Wi-Fi. So I don't need to run an extra USB cable from that computer to my laptop. And I have installed actually all the astrophotography software that I'm using, PhD2 guiding, Sequence Generator Pro, all kinds of uh, different tools. And uh, yeah, I really like this setup because yeah, a computer gives you the freedom to install the software you want to uh, work with or the software you like most for your astrophotography. When you start out with a new camera, of course, you need to download and install the correct driver of your camera so that you can use it in combination with your laptop or your computer. So in my case, I'm using a, a ZWO camera. And when you just go uh, Google ZWO camera software, uh, you get to this website. Um, yeah, under the support section of their main website, astronomyimagingcamera.com. 
uh, you will find the correct driver. So here you can see the ASI camera uh, driver. You can download it here. It states this driver must be installed for Windows users to use the ASI camera. So just download and install the correct driver. And of course, when you're using a Mac or a Linux uh, platform, you should download the correct driver for that particular platform. Um, the second thing I want to remind you is um, if you are planning on using ASCOM instead of using the ST4 guide uh, port for auto guiding, you should first download and install the correct ASCOM drivers as well. So if you never used ASCOM before, uh, you should first uh, install the platform. So platform 6.5, you can download it from their website ascom standardsorg Just download it, install it. And the second thing you need to check out is the driver for your particular equatorial mount you're going to use so where can i find that actually if you click on downloads um, you can see here driver downloads for ascom um, and you can see that ascom is actually a very broad platform to automate not only your equatorial mount but all kinds of things eh? so you can automate a dome filter wheels focusers rotators etc etc um, but for auto guiding, the thing you need is to have an ASCOM driver for your equatorial mount. So when you click on telescope slash mount, you can find the drivers for all kinds of mounts. So maybe you have a celestial mount, maybe you have a sky watcher mount, maybe you have an ioptron mount or an explorer scientific mount, etc. Um, you can click on, yeah, on this particular uh, site and then you can check out, hey, uh, what is the correct driver for my particular equatorial mount? And you can see that either uh, ASCOM shows you directly a download to the driver or you can visit a website on which you can download the correct driver for your particular mount. So you'll also need to install PhD2 guiding and it's very simple. Just Google PhD2 and you will get to openphdguiding.org, this website. You click on it and you can see here there are downloads for Windows based laptops and also for Mac based uh, laptops and computers. So depending on the platform, you might want to choose Windows or Mac. It's only 70 megabytes. You download and install the file and that's it basically. So I don't want to make this tutorial overly complicated, but when you just start out using PhD2 and you connect your camera and guide scope for the first time, I would recommend you check out two things. So when you click on guide, you can actually go to advanced settings. You can see it here, you click on it and you get basically these four tabs. I would leave most of it to default at first, but uh, one particular thing I would recommend you check is when you click on camera, uh, you can see here on the camera specific properties the pixel size of your guide camera and that's pretty important so in my case I am using the ASI 120 a camera with a pixel size of 3.75 so you check you should check out the pixel size uh, of your particular guide camera and enter the correct pixel size here in this box the second thing I recommend you check out is on in the guiding tab so when you click on guiding uh, you can look at calibration here and it has the focal length of your guide scope here. So in my case, I'm using the 50 millimeter Orion guide scope and it has a focal length of about 162 millimeters. So I have entered this number here. So you should check out the focal length of your particular guide scope and enter that number in this box. And the reason why I tell you this is that um, with this information, PHD2 has then the correct resolution. So the correct arc seconds per pixel um, of your camera and guide scope combination. And it can uh, send the correct signals to your equatorial mount to keep a particular guide star in the same position. So when connecting your gear for the first time, you can click on the USB icon on the bottom left of the screen. It will open up this particular connection window uh, in which you can connect your camera and your mount. Um, when you are going to connect your camera, make sure to select your guide camera. In my case, this is the ZWO ASI 120 color camera. Uh, take care not to select your main imaging camera. So in this case, I was using the ASI 1600 Mono Pro uh, for a particular imaging session. 
And next you will select the way in which your mount will be connected to PHD2 guiding. So remember, if you use that uh, auto guiding port with an ST4 connection, you can select the ZWO USB ST4 uh, connection to connect your mount also to PHD2 guiding. Uh, but if you have a dedicated ESCOM driver, you should select that dedicated ESCOM driver for the connection. Uh, in my case, it's, this is the EQMOD HEC56 ESCOM driver. So after connecting your gear, you can then click on the second button on the bottom left of the screen. This is the looping button. And then PHD2 will start taking one second pictures um, through your guide scope. And next what you can do is then to select uh, an auto select a star when you go to tools and you click on auto select star PHD2 will select the star on which it will auto guide your mount um, and then you can click on the crosshairs so that's the fourth uh, icon on the bottom left of the screen the green crosshairs if you click on it you can see that you have these dotted yellow lines and now uh, this means that PHD2 is calibrating itself for uh, auto guiding so it will push your mount slightly into the north position uh, after which it will push your mount uh, slightly into the west position and back again um, i'm fast forwarding this bit and after the calibration is done phd2 will start auto guiding and you will notice that it is auto guiding because the gr uh, the lines uh, turn green and also you can see the RA and DAC uh, auto guiding lines on the graph on the bottom of the screen. So at this point I should remind you that I was already polar aligned with my equatorial mount and I slewed my equatorial mount to the deep sky object that I wanted to image during this particular imaging session. So remember to first polar align your mount and then slew to the object you want to image before starting this auto guiding procedure. So another great way to improve your auto guiding is to use the guiding assistant. You can find it under tools and then click on guiding assistant. A PhD2 will give you this message that it will stop auto guiding during this procedure. Uh, just click OK and then indeed the PhD2 will stop auto guiding. Um, and it will start monitoring the position of the guide star that you have selected for uh, auto guiding. So remember, uh, when you stop auto guiding, uh, PHD2 is just monitoring the position of that guide star that you have selected. And your equatorial mount is just tracking that guide star without any assistance. So PHD2 can then actually measure slight variations in the tracking ability of your mount. So the tracking ability of your RA motor and your declination motors on your equatorial mount. And you can already see some slight variations here. So there are two things to that stand out when you look at the graph. Uh, first of all, you can see the red line, uh, that's the declination axis. It shows actually that I was pretty well polar aligned and my declination motor is accurately tracking the guide star. But you can see that the RA axis, the RA motor, is showing some variation in the tracking. You can see the blue line, it drops below uh, zero. Uh, so that indicates that my RA uh, axis is not accurately aligned with that uh, uh, with that guide star. So PHD2 asks you to monitor this for at least two minutes. Uh, I would say to be on the safe side, just take three, four, or maybe even five minutes so that PHD2 uh, can actually make an, uh, an accurate measurement uh, of the tracking errors of both your declination and your RA motors of your equatorial mount. So when you're done monitoring, you can click on stop and that will take you to the second step of the guiding assistant program. In that second step, PHD2 will measure the potential backlash of your equatorial mount. So remember, your equatorial mount, it has two motors, the RA motor, the right ascension motor and the declination motor. And both of these motors, they always have a little bit of play in their gears and that actually translates into backlash so backlash actually means the time it takes uh, your equatorial mount to respond to the signals that are being sent by phd to guiding uh, to correct the position of your equatorial mount 
So you can see that PHD2 guiding is now actually sending pulses to your equatorial mount and it will just measure the time it takes your equatorial mount to respond to those particular pulses. And it will use that backlash information together with the, the information on the potential tracking errors of your RA and declination motors to make some adjustments in the settings to even more improve your guiding. And uh, that will happen in the next step so I will fast forward to that step. So in the final step, the guiding assistant will just show you the outcomes of all of the measures it took. But more importantly, it also contains a recommendation uh, setting. And in the, this recommendation section, it will show you how to adjust the settings for your RA and declination motors in order to auto guide more accurately. And all you actually need to do is to click on the apply buttons uh, next to that information. So when you click on apply for RA and DEC, it will then implement, it will adjust those settings for PHD2 guiding. And actually that's it. It also shows you a, deck, uh, a backlash graph here. Um, but basically that's it and PHD2 will uh, resume its auto guiding. So hi folks, I just finished editing this video. If you like the content, please consider to give this video a thumbs up and please consider to subscribe to the channel if you also love astrophotography. So if you have any additional questions about PHD2 guiding, uh, do not hesitate and put your questions or comments in the comment section below. So I will try to help you out. I will try to respond to each and every individual question you might have. Um, also, if you want to, me to do any additional tutorials on astrophotography, please let me know in the comment section below so I can take that into account and I will try to incorporate that in my channel. And for next week, I'm planning on sharing some new deep sky pictures with you. I took with my Celestron Edge HD, so watch out for that. And as always, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.